Okay, second video, uh, we're just going to have a look at a method that you can use to solve any algorithm question that you might get uh, in a test or exam. The first part is to actually annotate or write on the question itself. Highlight anything that needs to be repeated, so anything that's going to be a loop, just mark that up. Uh, you can put an L or just write a loop. Highlight anything that needs to be input. So again, read the question carefully, look out for inputs, label those. Anything that needs to be processed or worked out. So if you're um, doing an, any sort of counting, working out an average, that sort of thing, highlight that as processing. And then finally, highlight anything that's going to be output. And what we're doing here, the problem is being broken down into smaller parts. And then when you've answered the question, you can either then check each of your annotations and make sure that you have sort of met each criteria. Um, now, once we've done the annotations, we're going to write the answer. So start off by writing anything that needs to be input or uh, writing the loop. Let's add the processing and then add the outputs. Generally, they're at the end. And one of the good things about this method is that let's say you really had trouble getting the processing and you weren't quite sure. Inside the mark scheme, there will be marks for um, having the inputs sorted out and also have, having written the outputs. So if you just did those, you're still going to pick up some marks. And again, we'll see examples of, of how this all works. Um, now, depending on what you're doing, what exam board you're doing, if you're looking at this to help you with your studies, um, you might have to declare the variables arrays or constants as you go. And there'll be some examples of this. This is using the uh, Cambridge um, IGCSE uh, version of pseudocode. Um, Always make sure you set any totals and counts to zero at the start. And if required, add comments. And again, in this version of pseudocode, we use the double forward slash to add comments. Um, on the next, on the next uh, page, you'll see uh, this single page guide that I've done, which has pretty much every single thing you need on one side to uh, write out pseudocode. And again, I've used the Cambridge version, but it is just a version of pseudocode. Um, you could create your own if you wanted to so that you can use this to help so this is the guide um, if it's helpful take a print screen or a snip of this or just have this as another video and pause it if you want to refer to it but you can see we've got comments input output assignment selection they're using if and case different types of iteration declaring then we've got data types and there's obviously file handling different operators library routines if you need to use those and then procedures and functions so um, Pretty much everything you need is there to refer to. Let's just have a quick look at the method using question one. So write an algorithm in pseudocode that allows you, uh, sorry, allows the user to enter a number. So the first thing we could, we'll annotate the question. We're looking for any loops. Well, there aren't any loops. Uh, we do have an input, enter a number. So I'm going to mark that up here. There's no processing and there's no output. So it's a fairly basic um, algorithm here. And if you couldn't think of the pseudocode for doing an input, we can look on this sheet and you can see we've got input and output. So there's an example of pseudocode for input. So uh, in this case, we're interpreting a number. So I'm going to write input and then I'm going to use number as the identifier or name of the variable. Now, if you are asking somebody to enter something, then it's probably a good idea to put a message on the screen. So we need to refer back to here and we can use output. This is what they're having to do. So we'll put that on the screen, enter a number, and then we'll input the response and store it as the, the variable number. And then finally, particularly for the Cambridge spec, we need to really declare any variables, um, arrays or constants that we use. So uh, again, across here, we've got declarations and that's declaring a variable. So declare, then we put the identifier, which is number, and then we specify the data type. And um, you can see where we've picked these out from the question. So I'll stop this video now and the next video will be the next question and I'll do one video for each question. Thank you very much.